Hey, hey, I loved Crazy Taxi on Dreamcast back in the day. And apparently so did solo developer Cassius John Adams, as he has taken the concept of Crazy Taxi and smushed it with the flying cars and skyscrapers from the fifth element to create Mile High Taxi, a game that's both instantly familiar and highly, ha, unique at the same time. But can Mile High Taxi live up to its pitch of a futuristic flying version of Crazy Taxi? And more importantly, do kids even know what taxis are anymore? Maybe it should have been Mile High Ubers. In case you missed Crazy Taxi back in the day, it was a high speed thrill ride that was all about picking up and delivering as many passengers as possible within a time limit in order to earn cash and extend the clock to keep going. It was easy to pick up, but was tough to master, as it was all about learning the limits of the cab and the best routes through the city. And much of that is reflected in Mile High Taxi, including the Crazy Taxi energy. Not only does Mile High Taxi wonderfully pull off its vision of a bustling sci-fi city filled with flying cars driving every which way, but it pairs that fresh style with the spirit of Crazy Taxi's over-the-top presentation, such as with three different drivers who react comically to their high-energy passengers that might complain that you're taking too long or freak out as you're smashing through signs to get them to their destination. What the Mulberry? Be careful! Some of the dialogue is especially funny, like a passenger who references the three seashells from Demolition Man. Also, I like the touch of how the camera lens would crack if you crashed too many times. Another pro, a new twist. Like Crazy Taxi, Mile High Taxi is still all about finding and delivering passengers as quickly as possible, only now it takes place within the upper levels of a bustling downtown city. Which means you'll also have to worry about your altitude when picking up and delivering passengers to their destinations. The city itself looks massive and has some huge open spaces with sprawling walkways and balconies that potential customers hang out on. Signposts and floors that normally would be above you in a more conventional game now pose as hazards as you make your way up and down the city. Instead of thinking in a sprawling 2D plane, you're going to have to keep track of the vertical space as well. To help you navigate, a mini map and arrow point you in the right direction, but you can even use the street signs to get around. In theory, you could be good enough to know where each drop off point is while also factoring futuristic Toronto shortcuts and alleyways. But it's surprisingly limited. Unfortunately, you can't fly wherever you want, and it feels oddly restrictive as a result, since you can only explore between the floors of 600 to 650, although it really only feels like five different levels. Any attempts to fly above or below this range will result in a warning to go back. That can be a little trigger happy around floor 605. The way the intro's narration teased it, I had hoped to unlock a larger license area. As a result of this, a lot of the city feels repetitive as you're almost always surrounded by similar looking buildings, which can make navigating a bit difficult, especially when it's hard to hear over the music or other pedestrians talking for what floor your passenger wants to be delivered to. Furthermore, moving between these heights can feel a little slow as your taxi can only climb or drop so fast, and I found myself wishing there was a faster way to change altitude. I eventually found myself having to adjust to the proper level almost from the start of each ride, which is far faster than having to loop around higher or rely on the right analog stick to slowly move up and down in a straight line. Lacks Crazy Taxi's more intricate gameplay. Unfortunately, Mile High Taxi's gameplay is missing several parts of what made Crazy Taxi so great, such as drifting around corners or bonus points for driving close to oncoming traffic. In fact, collision detection with other cars is virtually non-existent, and I found most traffic naturally stayed out of my way anyway. It also doesn't matter how far from a passenger you park as riders enter via a quick cutscene. Instead of running to the car and the clock if you park too far away in Crazy Taxi, which punished poor parking jobs. This all has a result of making for an overall simpler game that doesn't reward the same risky plays that Crazy Taxi would. Although it does at least have a boost you can pick up at a taxi station and it did help make the world feel slightly riskier as making mistakes becomes much easier when going that much faster, especially when approaching corners at high speed. The hilarious billboards. Finally, I have to give a shout out to some of the amazing billboards that decorate the city. Just look at this T-1000 billboard looking for a blurred Mila Jovovich. Genius. And there are several other funny ones too. Considering it took me an hour to earn $5,000, this driver is going to starve. Granted, you probably won't see them while going a couple hundred kilometers an hour, but they're fun rewards for those keeping an eye out for them. I don't think I realized how much I had missed the Crazy Taxi formula until playing Mile High Taxi especially with its focus on quick gameplay sessions. What's here is incredibly impressive for being the product of a sole developer, although I was hoping for a little more depth to keep me coming back for just one more round and better my score. But even if it didn't reach my lofty memories of Crazy Taxi, zipping around corners and coming to a screeching halt to drop off a rider can still be a thrilling time, and I liked Mile High Taxi as a result. 
Thank you for watching this Game Explain review, and take a look on the left for more videos you might be interested in.